Thanks so much, everybody. Welcome to Build. I am your host, Ricky Camilleri. Our next guest made a hilarious splash in the pitch perfect dramedy, Other People. And now you can see JJ Tota on the very funny NBC sitcom, Champions. Let's take a look. Hey, don't you want to sit with us? Oh, I'm sorry. We just met. I didn't want to seem too thirsty. <laughs> Yesterday, you bought us all chewing tobacco. Yeah, look, sorry about that. It was stupid. My dad just really wants me to be popular like he was and thought I should try to sit with the cool kids, not just the Indian kids. Um, wow. That's not stupid at all. Dude, that's racist. No, to be fair, I think he's more ignorant than racist. He thinks Ramadan is a hotel chain. I think it's sad that you're being encouraged to deny half of who you are. Wait, I've never thought about it like that. But you're right. <laughs> My house is whiter than a Williams Sonoma. If I want to hang out with Indian kids, they're like, oh no. But if I want to eat unseasoned turkey burgers, they're like, thumbs up, the whitest thing you can do with your hands. Yeah, next thing they'll probably want to take you camping. Oh my God, I cannot even. <laughs> Tell me you booked the site from last year. Dude, you know it. <laughs> How good is this turkey burger? Dude. Everybody, please welcome JJ Tota. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, I love the show, congratulations. Thank I don't think you. you could have really gotten a better group of people to create a sitcom on a, on a major network. It's I know, really great. it's insane, I'm really lucky. Yeah. You've got Mindy Kaling, you've got uh, Charlie, the other creator of the show as well, and you've got an amazing cast here. Yeah, I mean, everyone's so talented from, like you said, the creators to our wonderful ensemble cast, the people who are outside of this wonderful poster. It's good seeing my face there. Um, um, but yeah, everyone's really good. So how did this happen? Because I feel like uh, you made a massive splash with other people. You were you Your character in that was so authentic and so someone that I think a lot of people hadn't seen but at the same time really related to and we're so happy that it was out there. Yeah. So what happened to you uh, after that? Did you did your phone start ringing a lot? I mean, other people was insane. I mean, as you saw, like I was in a little bit of the movie, but the movie was just so good, like head to toe. And it was just a really great opportunity for me to be in a platform and uh, that I've never had before. And, you know, definitely people reached out. And, you know, immediately after that, I went back to L.A. And, you know, things started changing a lot. I started getting different meetings and, you know, working with NBC. And then I, after that, you know, working on Champions. So, yeah, super cool. There was this thing uh, with other people. I remember the reviews. All of the reviews were like, it's a great script. Molly Shannon is amazing. These people are great. And then you'd get to a paragraph that eventually would be like, but there's this one kid in it who was so incredible, we're gonna be hearing from him, blah, blah, blah. Did it feel like a lot of pressure? Did it feel like you just kind of made a movie, had some fun, and you'll see what's next? No, I mean, there wasn't any pressure at all. I just wanted to go for fun. I had never been to Utah, and I've seen like Sundance being this super fun experience, and I just jumped in, and you know, I didn't even think I was gonna be asked a single question. Um, and so I got up on the stage, and when they were, everyone was asking me questions about like my experience, I was like, oh no, but Molly, but Molly, because like, I mean, she is so amazing. Like, you can't deny everyone in that movie, but the the fact that I was recognized was, was the coolest thing, yeah. Are you from LA originally? No, I'm actually from like Northern California, yeah, like Davis. And when San did Francisco you start area. performing? Um, I mean, I've been acting like since I was like four in like musical theater, like really, really little, like my little, my three, three little pigs. I don't even know, my little pigs. Really, you know, you know the drill. <laughs> yeah, I think I got it. Yeah. And my little pigs. It's about this kid. He has three pigs. I don't know if you've seen it. Anyway, no, but I'm doing. Slip past me, I think. Sorry. He did. It was really great. Um, no, but then when I turned like nine, I moved to Los Angeles and I started acting. Yeah. And was other people kind of your first big role that you got? Um, no, I actually did a Disney show like a couple of years ago, like in like 2012, and that was my first thing. But I mean, that was other people was definitely the biggest thing that I've done. I think so. And what was it like? Talk to me about what it was like when you got when you got cast for other people and what the character was and how much of that was in the script and how much of that was sort of you bringing what you thought the character should be and who you were into that character. Yeah. Um, well, when I had gotten the audition, um, the character was like totally different. I think his, I don't even know what his name was, but he was obsessed with Celine Dion and like all this other stuff. And like I had just been talking with Chris Kelly, who you know wrote and directed other people. And he was just saying, like, what are your interests? And I was like, oh, like, I don't really, like, listen to Celine Dion. Like, I think at the time I was, like, 14 years old. I was, like, TBH. Like, I'm more into, like, other things. And I was, like, decorating my home at the time. And I was really into, like, this Marvel 
Carrera. And it just all stemmed from there. And then I think uh, Chris and I met up at a coffee shop in Silver Lake and we created the character that you see in other people. Now, Champions is uh, a, mu a, diff a much different character than uh, your character in other people. But I, but I will say what is similar and which is probably something that has to do with who you are is that he's a character who really owns who he is and is incredibly self-assured and precocious. Yeah. I would say, right? Yeah, I mean, I feel like we all kind of share that, me and my friends over here. Um, Michael, and then I think honestly, oh no, it was Justin. I was gonna say my other character's name is Michael. But yeah, and just being like confident and you know unequivocally yourself and on this show, Michael really brings that out, which I think is super cool. Where does that come from with you? This, 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 uh, this confidence to be unequivocally yourself, as you said. I mean, I'm not like 100%, like I don't care what anyone thinks. Like obviously I'm human, I, I do care what people think. Yeah, you are an actor. Yeah. I can't imagine you <laughs> are 100% Yeah, all the 100%, time. but still, you know, after getting like bullied and then just people who, you just judge you for who you are, you get to a certain point where you're just like, I have to own myself. Like if no one else is gonna do it, I have to do it for me. And um, you know, I'm, I think I've done that and I'm super excited about that. Obviously long way to go, but so far, yeah. Have you, uh, since you've gotten the show, uh, or even when you got recognized for other people, did you email any of the people that bullied you and were just like, hey, check it out, you know? Uh, no, definitely not. God, you people are so good. I would do that to I all know. of them if I had the chance. I know. Actually, like, I we... make personal phone calls. I know, calls. I should have. I just, like, don't care. Actually, in third grade, we all had, like, AOL, which is so funny, AOL accounts. And, like, we had, like, a group chat. I should log on to one of our little messagings, <laughs> like, IMing and, and see what's what's up over there. Personally, call people that bullied me when I was in middle school and be like, hey, it's Ricky. We hey, should do that. Got my now. own show. Bye bye. Can someone bring me my phone? No, I honestly like those people. Let's call like, them right now, live. They're still <laughs> playing like soccer or whatever in like, you know, Northern California doing their life. I mean, I hope they're doing well. And I've come to the realization that they're just bullying me because they're not secure in their self. So I hope they found themselves, you know, who knows, but. So you said that with other people, Chris Kelly kind of talked to you about what you were into and then ended up tailoring a little bit of the character around that. How did this character come to be on Champions? Was there any kind of discussions about tailoring it around you or what you wanted to play or? No, I mean, I, I'd been working with NBC for like six months to a year prior to getting Champions. Um, like developing a show and just wanting to work with them. I mean, there's an amazing network, obviously, with friends and like every amazing thing that they've ever done, Saturday Night Live. And um, this show was just like right out of the script from Mindy Kaling and getting the, and Charlie Grandin, getting the opportunity to do it was so cool. And yeah, I just like saw it on the script. We made it a thing and it was cool, yeah. What's it like working with these guys, Anders and, and, and Andy? So cool, they're so nice and you know, Andy is like me, like this is like our first like biggest, you know, role on like a TV show. So like we're going into this, but like having Durs, he's like such kind of like a pro and just does not care what anyone thinks whatsoever. And like, I just think that's so cool because, you know, working with him, he just like does not give a fudge. Oh, you can curse if you want to. No, I'm not going to. Okay, great. But um, <laughs> but he doesn't. Age restrictions. He doesn't on that, give a know. fudge. No, but he doesn't give any type of chocolate. You know, caramel, anything. He really doesn't. He just. Gotta watch the carbs. You know. He yeah, cares. I mean, no. But I wonder. No, he doesn't. That's Andy. Andy's gymming like those guys upstairs. Um, no, Andy is always working out and eating like. He is. I knew he wipes. was. When I asked him about that, he was he was shy about talking about his workout regimen. I'm sure, maybe he's discouraged. I don't know, we're on a show where we have a gym. Yeah. Um, I don't know why he would be, but yeah, I know. Uh, Andy like, loves I gotta do out. it for the show a couple times a week, you know, and I was like, I don't know, man, you're pretty big. Listen, I don't think that he was working out as much on the show, exposing him, I'm exposing his secrets. Cause I mean, they worked long hours. I mean, we all did. I don't think he had time to, but he made time. I'm pretty sure. What do you mean when you say Anders uh, doesn't give a, a, a fudge? Mm. What, is that, what does that entail? What does I that mean, look like on set? I mean, he's just 100% himself. I mean, obviously, he's like, you know, a kind being. If he gets a note, he's, you know, going to take it. Not in that sense, but, you know, if he wants to, <laughs> you know, do something in a scene, like, he's just going to go out there and do it. And, like, he's just himself, and he doesn't let anyone, you know, tell him who he needs to be. And I feel like I've definitely learned that lesson from him, just, like, just not caring. Yeah, is that how you try to approach scenes, at least off the before you start getting notes? Sort of go in, don't care, see what comes out? No, I mean, not don't care. It's more like don't care what people think, as in, like, the haters. But, like, still work hard. Like, he's 
super hardworking. And you also do you have, have haters? Two kids. I mean, uh, yeah, you have an, a neighbor. You know, you can come over. There's a few of them. Um, I mean, even in my family, let's be honest, there's some cousins. But it's okay. Uh, no, but I, I think They're everyone jealous. has, you know, haters or whatever. But yeah, no, Durs is hardworking. But it's just like when it comes to people who are, you know, not down for what you got, and he does not care. So I think that's cool. Do you love the way I said that just then? I did like that. I was yeah. just like, I did a little swirl. Down for what you got. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm like coming out with a song titled that with Bruno Mars. <laughs> Super exciting. Um, talk to me about what what actors do you sort of, or, or what actors do you sort of look up to? Do, do you kind of model your career after, if you, if you could, if you think about yeah. it? Yeah. Um, I definitely think like the Phoenixes, like River and Joaquin Phoenix are just like, you know, insane actors those are people that like I just like love their movies and everything they've done like Robin Williams is an inspiration to like millions of people obviously and seeing his movies and you know pre Matt Damon like you know Goodwill Hunting Matt Damon <laughs> no shade but like if we is could there go not back any... to that time huh. like what has he done recently he had a really fun cameo in that recent Steven Soderbergh movie that oh, was yeah that was, I guess that, that was fun but, as but as I don't like know if him he's being any... like a you know Casey Affleck those fun guys, they're good. And then, like, people, like, I just met last night, like, Kate McKinnon. Like, I look up to her so much, and she's so funny on SNL. She's Where did you meet her? Uh, at Mean Girls. She oh. touched me. She came up to me because she knew Chris, and she had introduced herself. I was like, you're introducing yourself to me? Like, you are a queen. Like, you're insane. And um, She's incredible. Yeah, I mean, I could go on and on people that I just, like, look up to and just love watching. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah she is so talented. And when you think about your, when you think about this character and going in to play him, was there anybody that you kind of modeled him after? Um, no. I mean, I feel like the script was so like visceral, and just reading it, you kind of see the image straight out of the paper. And yeah, I mean, I just think Michael is so individual, but can relate to so many other people, and is you know relatable, and just represents a group of people, whether it be gay people or Indian people who haven't been shown on television. So I think that's really cool. What's it like working with Mindy? Do you talk to her? Did you talk to her at all about the character beforehand? Um, there wasn't like much like beforehand talk but obviously like on set and stuff we'll talk about like what she think you know michael would do in that situation but i mean just working with her is just insane because she's so talented and a veteran of comedy and it's just so exciting to get to work with someone like her can we talk about your jacket oh let's do it i love this jacket it's the real thing. It's Coca-Cola. It's Coca-Cola. I, I don't know if you're, here. You're, not, you're not sponsored by Coca-Cola. No, right? but if you want to sponsor me, you can go ahead and do it. This is a shout out in the hopes of a sponsorship. This is me begging for a sponsorship from Coca-Cola, even though like I don't drink Coca-Cola, but I would if you sponsored me, and I would tell people that I would drink it. Um, yeah. I don't drink Coca-Cola on the I reg, but I will soda. say, I don't drink soda on the reg, okay. but I will say... The reg. A Coca-Cola in a glass with ice every mm. now and then is, is very refreshing. No, not good for you. Uh, well, refreshing. I mean, I mean like, refreshing. You, like you enjoy it. Yes. Um, yeah, no, I'm a Pellegrino sparkling water. Again, Pellegrino, please sponsor me. <laughs> Any type of sparkling water, I honestly really like sparkling water. Flavored sparkling water, too, or just regular? Just regular. Same. I mean, if I need to have flavor, then I will. But, yeah, I just like. Too flavored. It tastes like Splenda. Really? Yeah. I guess so. You know that you use Splenda to kill rats. Do they really? Let's go more off topic. Let's talk about rat. No, but yeah. Dive, deep dive. They dive do. into this. Yeah. I, know. I well, didn't know they that. They do. And yeah, well, they use it, um, and it's also shown that it, it gives rats cancer, too. Huh. But it's a whole thing. But then they're prone to bladder cancer. We could go on and on. I read it on an NBCI global page. I don't Shout, know if out you ever read. <laughs> Shout out to NBC. Shout out to NBC. Does NBC own NBC? Oh, NCBI. Oh, I oh, NCBI. Yeah, I don't know what it's NCBI It's like a scholarly is. source. Okay. This is just getting more and more boring. But yeah, it's that, yeah. Um, let's talk about the, uh, the 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 bullying campaign that you're that you're working with, mm -hmm. right? It's National uh, Anti Bullying Week. Excuse it's, me. It's, it's not, not about, about bullying. bullying, and it's all about changing the con the, the culture. And it's not you know just bullying, but just discrimination against people of color, people in the LGBTQ plus community, um, and just anyone that has been discriminated against and either like misrepresented or, or hurt um, because of their differences. And it's a super cool organization. And you know I'm going on. I know there's. Uh, Nick Cannon is hosting uh, tomorrow. Uh, we're doing a live stream to a lot of kids and just talking about our experiences, whether it be bullying or discrimination. And it's super exciting, and I'm really happy that I get to be part of it. What uh, What were your experiences, if you don't mind me asking? No. Um, I mean, just, like, 
I feel like it's not like that unique, just like being at school and, you know, just being bullied for who you are and like wanting to dress differently. And like, I probably get bullied for wearing this Coca Cola. I mean, not anymore, but like, you know, if I was That's like, cool. this is like fashion forward. Okay. But when you're like five years old and you try to be fashion forward, like kids don't get it. They think it's weird, you know? And so like that kind of stuff. Um, but just people in general in school who are just, just not down for what you got, you know? And um, I feel like just a lot of people can relate to that. And, I hope that I get to share my story tomorrow and I hope some other kids do. Where did you get your fashion forward sense? If you were fashion forward at five, six years old, where do you think that came from? Where do you think those influences came from? I mean, I had a grandfather who is an interior designer. I feel like he blessed me with the design. But it's all about just like it just being different and seeing, you know, cool different stuff and putting it together and taking risks and yeah. I don't know if I got it from any certain source. Do you feel like the characters that you've portrayed in other people as well as in Champions are sort of shining a light on, on marginalized people or kids who probably don't normally get a voice? Yeah, I do. I think in an indirect way, which I think is super cool because we're not saying, like, Michael on Champions is gay. Like, deal with it. You know what I mean? Like, everyone's already dealing with it. Like, we're not asking for acceptance or, like, even tolerance. We're just saying, like, this character is gay and it should be the norm, you know? We should represent um, people on television who are straight, gay, everything in between. And... Um, yeah, I think that's what that show is doing. So it is shining a light, but in a more indirect way, which I think we should be going about it that way. Yeah. Let's get some questions from our audience. Who has a question? Hi. Um, so you were in Spider-Man: Homecoming recently too, uh, and I was like, that was part of a partly a teen um, or updated version of a teen movie, um, and with a diverse cast. What was it like being on that set and working with the rest of the crew? Yeah, it was super cool. Um, I mean, it's just insane, like, a Marvel movie. I feel like that's, like, everyone's dream. And, like, my How big is the set when you're there? Oh, it's insane. I mean, it wasn't... We weren't filming on a soundstage on the first day that we were there. Um, it was, like, an actual school in, like, Atlanta. And, like, my part was, like, so small. But, like, we were flown to Atlanta. I mean, it was a whole thing. And um, I was there for, like, a week and a half. It, I mean, it was super cool. And just being on that set where, like, you're dealing with a huge studio that's, like godly in a sense you know and it was just super cool and everyone was so nice and working on set with like tom holland who's just so sweet and you know zendaya and all those cool people next question hi thank you for coming um besides acting in champions is there any other role you would like like directing an episode or writing exactly? yeah i definitely um you know like writing and like producing and i definitely want to get into that more um i've like started to dive into that so it's super cool what was that period of time like before champions came along where you were kind of developing something with nbc for like six or seven months yeah um i had you know, adam scott had produced other people and if you guys don't know him he's super cool he's like in literally everything like everywhere i look it's like adam scott is there and um, h&m ads now i think, too, I, I think i'm that. sure i mean he's like insane and him and his wife are so nice and getting to work with them was a great opportunity. I basically, you know, had come up with a story um, for a show that, you know, I wanted to do and we were creating it and I had sold it to NBC like maybe even two years ago now. So I think that was super cool. And, you know, obviously that fell through. It wasn't like the happiest time, but like literally two days later, I'm not even kidding. No, I think the day that we realized it wasn't going to go through, I got the script for Champions, um, which was like the untitled Kaling Charlie Grandy project. And um, this happened. So, I mean, I would, I don't regret anything and I'm so happy that it turned out the way it did. And hopefully we get to, you know, sell some more stuff and bring some more creativity out there. I think time for one more. Hey, uh, since you're on Champions, who are the, who are your champions in your life? Oh, um, well, my mom is in the back right now, so I'm definitely, right there. I'm definitely gonna say mom, no, but honestly, yeah, I think my mom, and I think my sister, and, you know, my parents, honestly, my family, I know that sounds, like, kind of, like, cheesy, but just, like, have kept me grounded, and, you know, I'm just looking out there, and Mila Kunis, and she's just amazing, she's just, <laughs> for any particular reason, she's just, just gorgeous, yeah. And beautiful and so talented. That's true. Guys, I, I'm in love with Mila Kunis. I, I think caught just... forgetting Sarah Marshall for like 10 minutes the other day on television. Really? Yeah, and she's I, so and good. I was just kind of like, God, she's beautiful. Look at how oh, yeah. beautiful she is. She's beautiful. She's yeah. so good. Um, so I'm uh, going to see her new movie with um, Kate McKinnon. Your new best friend? really Kate funny. McKinnon. I know, my new best friend. We met for like three seconds. It was amazing. Have you met Mila Kunis yet? Mila Kunis? No, I haven't. But, you know, hit me up. I'd love to meet her. She seems really cool. <laughs> 
Uh, JJ, Champions is on uh, NBC, the very funny Champions, mm -hmm. and people can check out Stomp Out Bullying tomorrow, the live stream hosted by Nick Cannon, which you'll yeah. be a part of as well. Do you, uh, is that uh, stompoutbullying.com, or do you know how... Yeah, it should be streamed through their website, so yeah, that's super cool. Yeah, Champions, Thursday nights, 9.30, check it out. Excellent. JJ Toad, everybody, let's hear it.